Thank you very much for those that, that, that are coming today to, to this event. Uh, we're going to have today uh, um, one of my talk shows, radio podcast, Building Resilience. Building Resilience that we air simultaneously with uh, in the Christian channel, HOD Radio World Network in Facebook and a live LinkedIn audio room that we're connecting today, both at the same time. For those that uh, are new coming to the show, my name is Jose Pereira. I, I'm a leadership and resilience coach. And this is a show that uh, the way the mechanics uh, that we do for this show is that we publish during the weekend our newsletter called Building Resilience, where we uh, select the topic related to leadership or resilience or management topics. And, and then we develop those topics and, and bring to the show. So today we're gonna be talking a topic where we, we wrote in our newsletter that is called Breaking Barriers, Building Resilience Against Workplace Discrimination. This is, a, this is a topic that maybe will resonate with many, many people because I know that is unfortunately it's very common seeing discrimination in the work, workplace. So we're going to be talking about several types of discriminations, how it works, what can be done if you're feeling that you're having this type of dis discrimination. I'm going to be talking about here in the U.S. some law some laws that goes against those discriminations and even some institutions, NG, NGOs, foundations to advocate to stop in this type of practice. So this is a, a, a very interesting topic that we're going to be talking today. And I have with me my, my friend Alison Johnson that, I, that, that is supporting me. Thank you, Alison, for being here with me. So, so let's begin to talk uh, uh, related to the topic. Before we begin, uh, uh, let me uh, say hello to people that are joining the, 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 the program. I have Frederick, I have Michael, I have Pratisha, Naomi, Peter, Rezi, Sayan, Kevin, Basil, Kebitswin, Evelyn, Refugio, and drain and 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 people begin to join and we have here also in in the radio station we have always our our, our faithful uh, friend daniel we have pastor uh, olotu we have rachel we have uh michael we have frederick and michelle Okay, so people uh, uh, continue coming to to the stage this topic breaking barriers Building resilience against the workplace. Why I br brought this topic? Because ev ev every week I try to investigate topics that that, that that can resonate with the uh, with the audience. I always are asking people that if there is some topic that they really want to bring, just DM me and, and bring it to me. But really, I want to talk about this because um, I did I did my career basically in the oil and gas, and and I I, I did my career working with a. Uh, uh, basically, with joint venture with international companies, uh, uh, where we did joint venture, I was a, a signee in a company called PDVSA and Silco Petroleum, and uh, and our counterparty were were from several countries. And when you work with people from several countries, you will find a lot of difference. You know, Re differences in religions, difference in races, difference in beliefs, in politics, sometimes genders. And even you, you, you will find uh, uh, some disabilities. So basically, when you begin to deal with all these uh, environments and, and those changes and the uh, cultural difference, you really, as a leader, you really have to understand those differences and, 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 and accept it. And accept it because one of the most uh, uh, big challenges that uh, some managers, some leaders have when they are assigned to this uh, uh, multicultural uh, uh, environment. For example, somebody that is assigned to another country. Sometimes you go with your beliefs and your practice and your culture, and sometimes the, uh, uh, people make the mistake, it's a very, very wrong mistake, that you try to adapt them to your culture. And has to be in the contrary 
because you you are in their country and you you have to accept the, the, the cultural difference so 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 this is something that, that that is a very very big mistake that some leaders and some managers uh, uh, do so so talking about what is that discrimination um i'm gonna say that the, the, the mechanic of, of of the show i'm gonna be talking uh, about this topic in around a 30 minutes time frame and the next 30 minutes i'm gonna open the mics to the people that want to share their opinion, if they have some particular case that they want to share, or if they want to make any uh, questions, I'm open to answer any question. I see coming to the stage, Dr. Arshad, that is an authority in, in, in this, in talking about the, the uh, problem in the workplace, he's an authority on this. We have uh, uh, Alikia, we have Andrew, we have Giovanni, Giovanni, my good friend Giovanni, thank you Giovanni for being here. Do Dr. Leslie Ademola, is D Dr. Leslie is an authority in this too. Ad Adrian Refugio, J J Jasmine, Basile. So many people that have a, a lot of experience that I believe they can be a, a wonderful chair if they come to the stage. So let's begin uh, talking about this. Discrimination in the work, workplace. As I said, there are several types of discrimination. I, I'm going to mention the full five more important discrimination that you will find in, in the workplace. There are discrimination on religions. There are discrimination on genders. There are discrimination on race. There are discrimination in disability and in politics. And, and, and Beginning with talking about religion, what is discrimination in religion? Uh, is when, when as, as the word says, uh, as if you're in a workplace and the people have different religions, you as manager, you need you need to accept that your employees have their own religion and their own belief, and 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 every religion has their own practices, and you have to accept those practices because. That is their belief, and, and, and you have to be conscious that this is what they, they believe. So sometimes there are companies that they make the mistake that they, they don't accept the, these, these differences. For example, if you're a, a Muslim empl employee, the, 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 the Muslim have some several practice of praying during the day. So you need to give them, allow them to have their opportunity to pray. They have to have their own space because they, 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 there are some uh, safe place to do this. And you need to accept that some companies, unfortunately, this is a big mistake they do. If you are, for example, a Jewish, there, there are also some, the, the observation of, of the Sabbath. So how, how you're gonna oblige uh, 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 somebody that is from the Jewish community to working in the, the Sabbath, if this is a, something that it goes against their, their belief. So you have to be respectful for, for, for those differences. And, 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 and the use of uh, some outfit, for example, the hijab or the, or the turban or, or the jarmulk, uh, th these are uh, 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 um, customs, outfit, depending on the religion, you have to accept them. And this is something that, unfortunately, are, so there's have been some mispractice on, on this, and this is really disturbing, it's really disturbing in the workplace, and not accepting the religion's differences. Another another discrimination that, that sometimes we see, we see in some companies is gender, gender discrimination. That can be a, a, a discrimination depending if you're a male or a female, or, or depending on the sexual orientation. It's very, very common that this happened. Uh, there, there, there are a lot of uh, uh, polls and, and studies that have, done, that have been done during years about how there are unequal payment if you're a male against a female. The female, unfortunately, normally, they take m more uh, difficulties to have a, a, a the same pay as a, a male and sometimes they have difficulty to scale in the ladder or, or, or become leaders because there are this wrong belief that the, the, the female doesn't have the same uh, the, 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 the male. This is something really serious 
that, that many companies unfortunately do. They don't say they do it consciously, but they do it. They do it. You, you can see a lot of discrimination. You can see also sexual har harassment or, or pregnancy discrimination. I remember, uh, I mentioned it like two or three weeks ago about a case that I, I had the opportunity to face that I had in, in, when I was a, the CEO in, 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 in my former company. I remember I had a, a very unfortunate case that I had to deal of sexual harassment of two of top executives. One was a, a PR lady and the other wife was his boss. The top, top guy of uh, and the PR. I remember we, we, we went to a summit and in that summit, this guy got some drinks and he began to have a kind of a behavior that I, I was really misleading. And, and really the situation was that he, that guy was harassing this lady and, and we didn't know that was happening. And, and when I observed that, I immediately stopped it. That the guy was uh, 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 under an investigation. And that, that, the final thing that happened that this lady filed a lawsuit against that, that guy and the guy was fired. The guy finally was fired be, because of this behavior, because this is something that you need to have zero tolerance on, on this type of behavior. So sexual harassment is, is unacceptable in the, in the workplace. So uh, this is unfortunately one of the discrimination that is very common, gender discrimination. <laughs> we have race discrimination. Even the people, again, some company doesn't, doesn't promote it and they, they don't accept it publicly, but they do it. They do it. So r r racial, r racial discrimination has to do that, that you have the hiring practices. That maybe you, you are hiring somebody and you do unequal payment depending of, of the race. This unfortunately happens sometimes with the black people and the Latino people. I'm a Latino. I'm a Latino, so I know what it is. I know what it is. I remember when I came here to the... When I was assigned to come here to the U.S. to work with Seiko Petroleum, I, I was assigned by my parent company that it was PDVSA, the, the, the Venezuelan Oil and Gas. When I came here uh, to work, I came as a assignee, an international assignee to the company. And, and I, wa I was coming from the parent company, the headquarters. And I, I, I felt at the beginning, I'm going to be honest, a, a, a lot of... Uh, pushbacks, setbacks, because I was a Latino boss with a, a lot of Americans, uh, uh, employees, and at the beginning, I had some pushback. But, you know, you have to be very intelligent. That, that, and that is part of the, the emotional intelligence that a, a leader has to have, that, that try to figure out this. And then at the end, we we normalized the situation in and in, 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 the relation became to be very, very, very good. But I, in the beginning, they, they, they had this type of pushback with me because I was a Latino. So, so, so sometimes when you have a Latino boss or you have a, 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 a um, from the, the Afro-American community boss, there are people that, that have this type of, uh, uh, problems with, with, with race. And, and, and sometimes you create a, a stereotypes with, with the people. So you create stero a stereotypes. And that does, does nothing to do with the race. I can tell you, I, that I worked with several multicultural cultures. I work with, uh, with Asian countries, uh, people like the Chinese or the Japanese or Indonesians or Malaysians. I, I work with uh, people from, from Vietnam, from Vietnam. I work with people, uh, British, Americans, French, Italians, uh, uh, many cultures. And believe me, that doesn't have absolutely nothing to do with the race or, 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 or where they come from. The people are smart and they are smart wherever they are. I remember that, well, I'm not going to mention the company, but, but uh, we did a, a joint venture with an Asian company. And, and uh, the people of that, of that country, normally they are very small and they, 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 are, they are very skinny. And, uh, and you know, you have those stereotypes. 
uh, on the people. The, the, uh, the, the, but these guys were super smart, super, super smart, super intelligent, super intelligent the guy. So I really understood that that doesn't have absolutely nothing to do with, 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 with the race or, or, or where you come from. So another of the discrimination that you, you can have is disability discrimination. Even there are law that protect us the disability, there are companies that, that make the, this type of discrimination. Uh, uh, because again, you have to give the opportunity to the people that have disability. And sometimes there are companies, they don't have reasonable accommodations for employees with disability, maybe mobility disability, for example, wheelchair, or if they have a, a ear and visual impairments. Uh, and, and sometimes there are that, that unfortunate belief that they can be some uh, uh, problem with the performance that, that is totally unrealistic. That doesn't have nothing to do with the realistic. So, so um, I see if Spencer tried to raise the hand. Spencer, give me some minutes. And I'm going to begin to open the mic in some minutes. So, so let, let's uh, let's be a little bit patient on this. So, so the disability is another discrimination. is very common, very common. Unfortunately, that that, that can happen too. And the last uh, discrimination that I'm going to mention here is someone that is incredible. Uh, Awful this discrimination. There is political discrimination. Companies that have some comp, uh, some some political uh, uh, behavior or, or belief, and if they have somebody that that doesn't have their own beliefs, that they they, they, they have another political uh, um, uh, belief, they can have this type of problem. This is. Very unfortunately, and he, and I can say, sometime here in the U.S. this is happening because there there, there are these these kind of uh, you know always this dispute between the Democrats and Republicans, and now we are in an election year, and sometimes that this can be very well uh, seen. Like for example, in the media, it's very common that you see a media that is is is, is a. Uh, oriented to the Democrats, and you have a uh, media that is oriented to the Republicans, and and all their employees had to be Republican, or their employee had to be Democrat, and that that's not fair because you 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 need to have your own belief. I'm gonna say that th this discrimination it becomes it can become really serious in my country. I, I come from Venezuela. Venezuela today has a communist regime, and the discrimination for politics during you know, all these last 20 years has been ridiculous but but is 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 has been so extreme the political discrimination that that even in Venezuela some more than 15 years ago during this communist regime they created a, a famous database that was called in Spanish La Lista de Tascón, because the guy who created that list, that, that, that database, was a guy with a, his last name was Tascón. So that, that, that database it took his last name. So it was that Tascón database. In Spanish, it was Lista de Tascón. What this database did, they had in that list all the names of the people that, that, that were against the government, that, that were opposition. So the people that were from the opposition didn't have no opportunity to find job. They didn't have opportunity. If they were in a job, they were fired. If, if they, if they, if they uh, have a loan in a bank, they canceled their loans. Many of these people had to leave the country because they didn't have way to live in the country. This is a very extreme sit situation of political discrimination, but this is happening in that country. And this is happening to, in another country. In Cuba happens too. And you can see it also in another country that have these, these theocracies and, and these, uh, you know, uh, extreme, dictatorship uh, 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 um, regimes that they are so so extreme if the people don't don't uh, support the government they 
try to throw out all these people. So this is something, it's a very extreme situation, but it happens. Unfortunately, it happens. It happens. So now, so so we have these five. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recap these five. So we have a, a religion discrimination, racial discrimination, gender discrimination, disability discrimination, and politics discrimination. And, and 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 today the, the good news that there are more and more uh, uh, talking today of diversity and inclusion. So so DI the the DI that is the diversity and inclusion uh, uh, has been taking more place and place because the diversity is the recognition that there are differences in the employee that you can have different tendencies in the, in your race, in your gender, in their sexual orientation, in your age, in your religion, in your disability, in your political belief, and 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 you accept it. So this there are more and more companies uh, being more diverse, and inclusion is when you. In, depending on, on any of the background, you embrace and you accept everybody. So many companies, the good news, they, they are uh, promoting more diversity and more inclusion. And that fosters the sense of belonging. When, when a company embraces the, the promotion of diversity and inclusion, embraces the sense of belonging because reduces the, the discrimination that, that we're talking about, enhances the workplace, it makes it a better workplace, and the people become more creative because they feel better, they understand their, their self better, they, 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 you can attract top talent because no matter what their tendency, they will gonna come to work with you. So this is a win-win situation. So the, the company that have understand this today are those that have more diversity and more inclusion. And here in the US, I don't know in other countries, but here in the US it's very common today Many laws that protect the diversity and the, and the inclusion. For example, we have the, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that, that protects any color, religion, and sexual orientation. We have the Equal Pay Act, the, the, the EPA. We have the American with Disability Act, the ADA, that, that is to, to the protect the disability people. We have the ADEA, that is the Age Discrimination of Employment Act, that, 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 that was uh, um, ruled in 1967. We have the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, it's called the GINA. We have the Pregnancy Discrimination Act, it's called the PDA. We have the Rehabilitation Act, that was uh, uh, ruled in 1973. And many state and local discrimination law that here in the U.S. more and more laws are 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 being ruled to to protect gender, religion, race, disability, po politics, etc. from non-discrimination. So this this is very good that today this is happening, and and there are many institutions that that, that, that protect if, if so if you feel. That anybody that is in the audience or you know that somebody that's going through one of these type of discrimination and I'm not going to talk here in the US but there are many many institutions in their in, in the international uh, space so many countries have similar legislation and simi similar organization like the, the one I'm gonna the list here in the US for example you have the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission it's called the EEOC this is a this is a federal ag agency that protects uh, 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 using the umbrella of the EDA Act and the EPA Act. They protect the, the, those employees. So the EEOC is a federal agency that protects the people that have the same opportunities of employee. So this is a, 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 a very strong organization. You have the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU. This is a union that also protects the, the people from discrimination in the workplace. You have a National Association for Advanced Colored People. It's the NAACP that protects the people, the civil rights of people of color. You have a National Organization for Women that is called NOW. NOW it protects against the discrimination from the woman. So any woman that feel di discriminated, this is an organization that protects them. They have the Disability Right Education and Defense, is that DREF, that DRIF. That DRIF is also a, a, a federal organization that protects people that are going to discrimination for disabilities. 
and you have the Lambda Act. The Lambda Legal Act is a national organization that works achieving for people that they are from the LGBTQ plus community, that they, their right. There's a human rights campaign and you have a national labor relations board. There are many, many more organizations and a lot of local organizations that protect people that, that are going through discrimination. So in conclusion, there are, there, there, there are more and more laws, more and more organizations today exist in the, in, in the world protecting the people from discrimination and, and, and embracing diversity and inclusion. And many, many more companies that have discovered that it's smart to do that because that makes them be a better workplace to, to, to work. It's a win-win situation. It's, it's good for the company and it's good for the employees. <coughs> so, uh, 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 talking here uh, 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 about this, <coughs> I'm, I'm going to say uh, hello to many people that have been coming to the to the audience oh i have here my friend brenda Liz. she is an authority too in the, in the in this matter she talks about burnout because one of the problems that, that happened when when you're going through this type of situation is that the, the anxiety the depression that you get it tends to get to you to the burnout can you imagine working in a place where you feel that you're being discriminated is it's, it's really hard thing so i have here dr a ava wonderful person she's a, a, a publisher and an author and, and, and a, a great friend we have irene we have sandra San, sandra hola sandra from colombia ikene monchi Brendaliz, atul melissa Tim, Shohidil, Amber, Mohamed, Shayna, Professor Rosan, Evelyn, Naomi, Jasmine, Giovanni, Adrian, Temitopi, Elekia, Dr. Ashat, Refugio, Cabesti, Basil, Saint, Frederick, Michael, Peter, Mulfir, and we have two persons that I'm going to open the mic in a few minutes to give them opportunity to come. And here in the in the uh, HOD network, we have also we have Quent, we have Ivan, we have Joseph Burg, we have Abdil Latif, we have Monica Abdul, we have Paul Nguyen, Shabia Aluz. We have Fana Holiday and Daniel. So thank you for all the people that are hearing me. So I'm going to finish here uh, uh, talking about, uh, uh, without naming, without naming, I'm going to talk about, I always talk about our case study. So there was a famous tech company that was uh, uh, had to face a major lawsuit because they, they, they did a big racial discrimination. And, and this company uh, uh, that is very famous, the company, uh, uh, had to pay millions of dollars because they were filed for, 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 for a lawsuit because they were discriminated against racial equity. And at the end, this company had to re redo all the management. They had to fire all the, 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 the team and they have even to rebrand themselves because they, they begin to lose market because of this so this discrimination can be impact very impactful even from the pr point of view if you are a company that for some reason have leaders or managers that, that they discriminate so what my my final recommendation here to the people is that, they, that you have to take care seriously about this because sometimes when you're in the top positions you don't see what your employees are do doing down. So maybe you are having in, in your company people that have this type of discrimination and this has to be immediately stopped. Anybody that feels discriminated has to report it. I had to report it to the superior management and again, are all these institutions, they work supporting people going against this discrimination. And finally, I'm gonna conclude here saying that if you want to know more about this, there is an author called Dr. Robert Levinson. Dr. Robert Levinson is a very renowned expert. They always have been talking about social justice and leadership. 
and he has a, a written extensively uh, books related to discrimination in, in, in the organization. He has a book called The, the Conversation, How Seeking and Speaking the Truth About Racism Can Radically Transform Individuals in the Organization. It's a long title, but, but it talks about this. So he has been one of the most vocal authorities talking about discrimination. So, so uh, when you are going to any situation like this, again, you have to report it. So as a conclusion to open the mics, I'm gonna say here that, uh, that any workplace discrimination works against a company because that makes the, the workplace a bad place to work, the, uh, the, the, the environment of the, of the company will be very bad. You can be filed like happened with that company, a lawsuit, because again, today this is by law is prohibited. And, and, and you have to be respectful. You have to respect the, the, the difference. You have to respect the religion of the, of the person. You have to respect their culture, their beliefs. You have to respect their gender, their sexual orientation. You have to respect them, their their, their public belief, and you have to respect if they have any disability. So, so you need to be respectful. So this is my final uh, uh, conclusion here. For me, uh, talking about this uh, was really meaningful because during my career, I, I went through several moments that I, I saw situations like this. I particularly always was was in the in the position that anything that was going that they went uh, to discriminate the, the person, I immediately cut it off. I mean, and 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 what you have to do because th there comes a what 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 has to do a company if it really wants to to avoid this happening. You have to train your employee. The first thing you have to train. You have to hire coaches, hire mentors, and hire training. People like me, for example, that I am a leadership coach, can be used or or any and anybody that you 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 prefer to go and, and, and train your employees to avoid this type of behavior. Because this is something that can be trained, that people can be trained, because remember, you always can be retrained, your, your brain can, can be reprogrammed, okay? You have to have an open dialogue with your employee. That this has to be a safe place where the people can talk openly about, about this. And, and, and you have to champion, you as a leader, you have to champion the diversity and the inclusion. So say, say this, I'm gonna open the mics, I'm gonna open the mic uh, to Spencer and to Matthew. So, so and, and I have also Dr. Ashad coming. Uh, uh, let me let me put it on the stage. So let, let's begin. Uh, Dr. Ashad, the mics are yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Jose. Um, I think um, this subject that you've picked up today is one after my own heart. Um, I'm actually the son of uh, an Irish uh, mother and um, a Pakistani uh, father, uh, mother Catholic and uh, father Muslim, all right? so. Where do I stand? Now, I have been all over the world. I have seen people from various cultures, uh, various countries, uh, um, various colors, should I say, uh, various regions, various languages. And at the same time, I have had to uh, communicate. So um, I've been a managing director and uh, I have run many companies, organizations. I've been even asked to form a government, uh, but I backed out because I don't believe in politics. It's a mafia by itself. <laughs> uh, but um, speaking on this particular subject, I have walked into many a classroom as a university professor now and, um, and in my, as a CEO of my own institute also. I keep on saying the same thing over and over again. What is it? That is the fault of a person who actually is born into a certain family. Whether it's your religion, whether it's your language, whether it's uh, your, the color of your skin, 
um, it never made a difference. Uh, if you go through history, in the 60s, uh, uh, this thing started boiling up. It was put at bay. And then uh, finally, uh, it's cropped up again. For example, in the UK, like uh, I've been there recently also. The racial riots there. And then what had happened in the United States a year or two back, you know. Um, so, uh, workplace and now in many societies and countries even, discrimination remains a significant challenge that undermines morale and productivity. Actually, it manifests itself in various forms, including racial, gender, age, and disability discrimination, which creates an environment where individuals may feel marginalized or undervalued. So to combat this issue effectively, leaders at all levels must bring about resilience amongst their workforce and implement systematic changes. Now, what does uh, building re resilience actually involve? It brings about uh, awareness and education, basically. Yeah. So leaders at all levels, now when I say leaders, I, I don't just mean leaders of organizations, I mean leaders of communities, leaders of um, of societies, leaders uh, who are religious leaders, uh, leaders of countries yeah. even, yeah. or leaders of political parties, they must now start training programs, like you mentioned about yourself being a coach. I'm also a coach. Uh, at, um, I, I also train uh, CEOs like you, Jose, and basically it's to address an unconscious bias and promote inclusivity. Now, these kind of initiatives can help people at large recognize their own biases yeah. and understand the experiences of their colleagues by creating a culture of empathy and understanding organizations can actually lay the groundwork for a more equitable workplace. Uh, thank you very much, Jose, for having me up. Uh, I'm very grateful to you. I missed you yesterday in my own uh, uh, audio event. I, I was in a church service. The problem I have, Dr. Achade, when you do the program is when I have my church service. So <laughs> I have conflict, oh, yeah, I have conflict in my agenda. So, so yeah, I, I, I will try the next time. Maybe I had to do some arrangement in my schedule. But thank you for coming and oh, as always, very wonderful chair, because yeah. you said it very well. Sometimes the leader have the, their own biases and, and that's something that, that you know, is part of the, 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 the culture, the way you, you were trained, but the good news, uh, you can change your, your mindset. If you really have the disposition, if you really have the, 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 the really want, want to change, you can do it. And that, that's why the importance of hiring people like you or like me, that, that we are coaches, that we can help them. So, so very important, your contribution. Thank you very much. Brenda Liz, the mics are yours. Hey, hey, you got me cooking. I'm cooking. I'm making breakfast anyway. But um, what a great topic. So a lot of things come into my mind when you're talking about this topic. And funny enough, I was going to touch upon what Dr. Ash Arshad was saying about unconscious bias. I would say very, I come from the place, or let me put it this way. One of my core beliefs is that very rarely people do things on purpose like people very rarely people uh, decide oh i'm gonna wake up today i'm gonna discriminate on people very rarely mm -hmm. like it usually happens because unconsciously there's so much program that we have mm -hmm. that kind of guides us to take the actions that we're taking on a daily basis right yeah. so it takes a lot of awareness it takes a lot of recognizing the signs and education for people to bring that unconscious bias conscious mm -hmm. and I think that's what there, a lot of when I was in corporate right before I I decided to go into entrepreneurship there was a big movement in the organization I was part of where they were training people 
on unconscious bias, right? And it was funny because it was a mandated training, everybody had to take it, you know, you name it, right? And funny enough, um, a, we took the training and a week after the training, I'm on the stairs, right? Leaving the, the building and there's a person in the organization, she's a Colombian and she had been, um, bullying, kind of discriminating against me for a while, and I always kept my mouth shut. And it was really fascinating because she's someone who was on the rise for very senior positions. And right after that training, like the mandated day for everybody to complete was very short time. And I think it was like a day or two before I met with her. And she comes in and she starts to imitate my language, the way I speak English and the way I speak Spanish, because Puerto Ricans, we have a very unique way of pronouncing certain words, right? <laughs> so she comes in and she's basically introducing me to someone imitating my the way I speak and then making fun of the way I speak. And I'm like, even after, the, then like a light bulb moment click, because even after the training moment, right? Even after people being more aware about unconscious bias and how unconscious bias plays in our everyday role, she still resorted into the same behaviors. And then now knowing what I know, I just realized that it takes a lot of effort to create that awareness in society. It takes a lot of effort to create that awareness in the, in the working culture. Um, but can it be, can it happen? I remember there were a hundred thousand things that came into my mind when I took the training. Oh my God, I've been discriminating against this person, this person, this person. I've been doing this. I've been saying these words. It created a lot of aha moments for me. But if you leave it just in a training, if you don't take that training and make sure that the leaders of the organization are walking the talk and recognize when they made mistakes, then it won't move forward. So I think two, th three things. One, awareness. Two, walk the talk. And three, recognize when the organization has failed and what the organization has been doing different. And I think if the organizations see that, the potential of that, change will happen. And although I'll also say change takes time and at the same time, organizational change takes time and at the same time, all it takes is a 1%. Everybody gets better 1% today, tomorrow there's a ripple effect. So the more we keep on providing people the information, the tools, the techniques, the awareness, that's how we're going to drive change. And that's it. Back to you. Well, thank you, Bernd. That is well, very well said, because this is, this is something that has to be reinforced again and again and again. But the, the important here is not only the training. The training has to be done, of course. But, but the management, the, the leader, she has to really embrace the need that, that after the training, make follow-up and, and create the culture, the culture of inclusion and diversity. It is difficult, but there are companies that have invested money and time in this and it really pays off because the companies that have created this environment become successful companies they become the, the better workplace to work where everybody wants to go there i'm not going to name here but many many of the successful companies that we see in the world are because they have embraced this so yeah it, this is something that is not only a simple training the training is necessary but you have to you as the, as the person have to accept that you need to make change but the leadership of the company has also to be pushing they're making the change to happen. That, that is very, very important. Thank you for the share. Very, very good. Andre, my are yours. Thanks a lot. And I think a lot of what I was going to say has been said already by some of the speakers already. So it's, it's, I guess in my head, I'll try and summarize the thoughts that came to mind. I used to deliver unconscious bias training for organizations through a company called Taloa. And one of the things that came up a lot is that idea about buy-in from different levels. It's not enough to just look at the employees. It needs to be the leadership and the C-suite who buy into it as well. Yeah. Um, and I guess in my mind, there were three ele levels of it that I wanted to think about. The first one is the individuals, right? So the idea about looking at how resilience works against 
workplace discrimination the first step for me is knowing what actually workplace discrimination might look like because a lot of the times it's we bring our own stories into the workplace and assume everyone is against us so there are some things that may that may be perceived as discrimination when we may not realize that actually it's across the board and it's not just a yeah. target at us it That's might true. be a systemic problem problem it might be bigger than us but we might take it personally so the first step is identifying what actually is discrimination and not taking it personally the second one is once you know that it is personal what to do about it so um, i found that out the hard way and i think i've mentioned it in one of your spaces before that sometimes hr is not necessarily on the employee side it's on the company side so being aware you know citizens advice bureau might be a better place to go for support to know what to do next um finding your erg groups so your employee resource groups if there's a community of you within the company who can support you through it um finding other people externally who might have been through something like that before to have an idea about what to do about it but then also <coughs> the follow-on what can happen because one of the things i've had recently uh, one of my old mentees came to me about an issue she had at work recently where they put her through all this stuff and then it turned out that they were wrong but then they just left it there there was no follow-up there was no aftercare anything like that so what i find that is really important with us is documenting everything that's going on making sure we're building ourselves a case but then also having people around us to support us if we're going through workplace discrimination um and really, really quickly, just to touch on something you said earlier, Jose, about pull it, leaders pulling up leaders when they are discriminating against other people. Mm -hmm. I think that is really important mm -hmm. to be seen. Um, and there's this idea of calling out versus calling in, calling out being uh, public, you know, doing it in front of other people and saying, hey, this is not what we stand for as a culture. This is outrageous. But then also calling in sometimes if it's sensitive, pulling them in size and say, you know, were you aware that what you did there was discrimination and what are you going to do about it? I think you should apologize. You could do all this kind of stuff as well. Uh, because like you said, it impacts the companies because it impacts the culture. And if people, especially these days, post pandemic, if people are working in a, in a company which doesn't have a culture, culture where they feel supported they're going to leave which is going to lead to this retention issue that we're seeing right now so yeah i just wanted to share that thanks a lot it's great room yeah yeah it's very well said that exactly if you don't take care of this you're going to begin to lose people so so at the end at the end is 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 a lose lose situation so not only because it is necessary that people embrace the diversity and the inclusion is is a must it's a must, and today in the post-pandemic world, it's much more a must. Because the people, if they don't feel they're very well treated, they're gonna leave the company, period. You're gonna be, begin to lose talent. Thank you, thank you for, for that chair, Andre. So we're gonna have two more guests. Uh, but I, I, I'm gonna tell the, try to keep it short because we have only five minutes remaining. So we're gonna give up Refugio to talk and then uh, Evelyn. Refugio, the mic are yours. Thanks, Jose. And um, I agree with everything every, everybody said here. Uh, I'll keep this short. And I want to add a different twist. Uh, so I'm a senior leader for a global pharmaceutical company, and I'm Latino here in the U.S. And, um, and in addition to companies having to support, you know, the various DEI initiatives. And by the way, my, my company, AbbVie, uh, doubles down on DEI. So, so we are solid as far as support. But at the same time, you know, I, I strongly feel that we as underrepresented populations or all populations need representation at the top, right? And so even in, in my position as director, global director of cultural competency, it's my responsibility not only to be a senior leader, but to advocate for everybody. But in addition, um, you know, I, I take a different lens in that, you know, DI is, is really, it's a business, it's a business imperative. Um, you know, with my role, I plug into communities around the world. It, it basically drives our business. And so my, my color, right, my background, my culture helps me plug into those different communities to drive our business forward at, on a global scale. So it's, there's a business element of it. And so my point being is if we can, if we can collectively, you know, uh, uh, develop ourselves to being strong business leaders, to being great representatives for our community and ourselves, and help drive business and represent our communities. That's where that's where we need to be. We need to almost help companies help mm -hmm. us, if you will. It's not just on companies; it's on us as well. And, and that's the 
that's the responsibility I take and I embrace as I help drive my community and business forward. That's all. Thank you. The wonderful chair. And, and you said it very well, Refugio. We as Latino, even that it can be perceived as, as a disadvantage, it can really be an advantage. So thank you for the chair. Evelyn, the mic are yours. Thank you, Jose, for inviting me to speak. Thank you, everyone who is here. I'm um, really benefiting from uh, the people who are speaking, and especially the coaches who are sharing about how 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 workplace should be. And I really want to resonate with what you said in the beginning when you were doing your introduction that uh, this thing of uh, discrimination is especially so much. Even in, uh, in countries, I come from Africa in a country known as Kenya, and what I've witnessed is that uh, there's so much nepotism. You find where, where the leader is, is, uh, is populated by the people who are known to them or who have favor before them. And I think that has been a really a challenge as a nation. We are suffering in this, and even in other companies you find there is so much, like women are so much discriminated against it. And uh, it has really come as, an, as a big issue. Myself, I'm a virtual assistant. I work online. And, uh, you know, I've really been thinking about how do we resolve these kind of things. And I've realized that uh, as, as a people, as a community, we need to come up with a with some kind of training, and I thank God there are so many trainers here, to train people, the, the senior people and the junior people and the whole community about uh, emotional intelligence. And uh, I write so much on LinkedIn, and this is something I've taken personally. I, I want to just write about emotional intelligence and, uh, you know, what, how, how this can... Uh, you know, change the minds of the people so that uh, we can have a community and a people who understand, who, who have uh, self-awareness, who can uh, self-regulate themselves and, uh, you know, know how to solve conflicts and be able to live, uh, to have a, a, a great working relationship between the seniors and the juniors and the ones who even people think they should be taken advantage of. So I'm really Really grateful for these uh, for these uh, live. I'm really benefiting, and thank you so much, Jose, for hosting. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, thank you for for your share. Thank, thank you for your chair. We're going to give the last minute to Dr. Ava to make uh, her speech. Dr. Ava, my chair, yours. Thank you so much. What great conversation! Uh, hi to everyone. I think for me, um, having just done a, actually DEI. Uh, training in Falk in Italy last week. Uh, one of the things that we spoke about that, especially as a black girl from who live in Europe, I find that when companies and Andre probably can back me up on this, when companies in England, for example, cannot be as discriminating as they want to be, then they have become very microaggressive. So microaggression for me is the new discrimination, is, is the language they use, the phrases they use. It is how they, they, they have certain practices and stereotypes and tokenism and how they do it and dismissive in their comments to you and, and, and the unequal opportunities. And sometimes I find that they try to do that in a way to still get at you because they don't like your color, your language, your tongue, your tone, your sexuality, whatever it is, but they can't come straight out and do that. And so we have to become very mindful in our own operation but we also have to be mindful to look out for it because sometimes if we're not cognizant, we miss it. And if we're not cognizant and miss it, then it, it piles and it piles. And also as leaders, we have to be ethical in our approach and we have to make sure that we are not being microaggressive as a way of discriminating ourselves because let's face it all of us i think in some shape or form we're humans have some tendency to discriminate whether it's somebody's language and tone or whatever but we have to become aware we have to train ourselves to make sure that we are emotionally intelligent and self-awareness comes to the forefront of what we do and thus um, eradicating discrimination so that's my two cents thank you so much and a great conversation well thank you for all the people that came to the stage this was a wonderful event and a lot of knowledge i i, I want to say to everybody that th thank you for because all of you 
did a great contribution. I, I believe that all the audience that is hearing here had a, a great share. We're going to be continue bringing this type of topic every week. I, I'm doing this show every Monday morning. Again, if somebody wants to have any topic in particular, just DM me, give me ideas, because every week I'm going to be bringing topics that we can discuss here. I, I'm publishing in my newsletter, and then I'm going to be bringing to this show. I'm going to be bringing guests to the uh, uh, to, to the, this event because this has been a, like a, an evolving uh, program. And well, we're going to finish here. We came to the end. Thank you, everybody that was hearing, hearing, and linking out the room. And thank you, the people that were hearing me in Facebook Live. So, I'm, on the count of 10, we're, we're going to conclude now. Thank you for uh, being here. I'm going to wait the people to come in next Monday at the same time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye.